The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms to the poor. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach or moth can destroy. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Gird your loins and light your lamps. Be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline a table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be prepared for an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? The Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing all the right things. Truly, I say to you, the master will put that servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the maid servants and the men servants and to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come at an unexpected hour, the unknown hour, and will punish that servant severely and assign him to a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. But the servant who was ignorant of the master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall beaten, be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I'd ask Father Bob to write a check for a dollar to the person who can tell me what that Gospel is all about. Isn't it unbelievable? And the reason it's so unbelievable is because it didn't happen. It happened, okay. The scriptures were written well after Jesus left the earth. This is Luke written, Luke wrote the gospel as well as the Acts of the Apostles, probably into the 60s. So Jesus leaves around 30, okay. So the early Christians were still living off the, the memories of Jesus and they knew the apostles and they were carrying on and they were doing good things as Jesus taught them. But then they started getting lazy. They started falling off. This is the early church. So then the authors of scripture stand up, Luke for one in this case, says, wait a minute, wait a minute, you guys are forgetting all the things that Jesus told us. And so he begins his story of Jesus, his good news about Jesus. The first book is the Gospel, second book is the Acts, the actions of the early church. And in this section, he really focuses in on why he's composing this Gospel. Because the early church fell apart. They were not living up to their, their guidelines. They were not living up to their mandates. So Jesus gives us this parable of the man leaving his servants in charge and 
what Luke is doing is saying now, those of you who are screwing around realize this gospel is for you. Jesus is going to come back when you least expect it. You're supposed to be caring for the poor, just like Jesus taught us, feeding the hungry, taking care of the community, coming together in the liturgy. It wasn't a liturgy like this would be in a church, but it was the early liturgy, the coming together in communion. And now he says, I remember when Jesus said, and all that stuff you just heard. I remember. Now it couldn't, it may have happened all at once. Jesus gave this whole section of the Gospel of Luke, but it probably ha happened in segments because our tradition as Christians, we put the scriptures together based on oral tradition, a story. So people on this side of the church could tell me a story and give it to one person to carry it to that side of the church. And I'll bet when the story, whatever story it is, reaches the last person in the church, no one would recognize it because it changes. It changes. But they tried to be very faithful to the oral tradition. So they really made a point of remembering what Jesus said. The context had to be placed when the author opens up his scrolls and says, okay, I'm going to talk about Jesus. I'm going to talk about Jesus as applied to how you guys should be living the Christian faith. And of course, Jesus has given us a few hints. Now, listen to the hints. They weren't all, again, given in one sitting, but he gave us very clear hints as to what he expected his followers to do. First of all, don't be greedy. Don't hold on to your treasures like, like it's the last thing you're ever going to have. Be, be careful in what you have because your treasures are not here on earth. Your treasures are in heaven. Now, don't forget, Jesus is not around. Jesus has passed. He's ascended to the Father. And they got the apostles and, and the subsequent leaders of the community reminding the people what Jesus taught. That heaven was the goal. How to get there is our goal. I, re I remember years ago, I was in Ireland in Drahada. And we stopped along the side of the road, and I asked this little redhead kid, Excuse me, how do you get to Dublin? Now, it's a long distance, but at least the main highway would have helped. He says, oh, Dublin, Dublin, you, you can't get there from here. <laughs> so that's what's going on in the scriptures tonight. You can't get there from here unless you gird your loins, get ready, pack your bags, take care of the poor. You can't get there, heaven, where Jesus was, from here, the way you want to get there. You've got to follow Jesus' road. Just as a reminder, the scriptures, when they were put together, went back in time, and the first reading we heard had to do with something that reminds us of our past as Jews. We are Judeo-Christians. The freedom event for the Jews and us, and it's repeated at Mass, is the Passover. They remember that. The Book of Wisdom was composed by authors who were Jews who had the same kind of problem that we have today. The message is getting diluted. They're losing the message of Judaism. Why? Because other philosophies are coming in and becoming very popular. I can't tell you, just open your paper, paper, open your Twitter, open your TV, and there are like so many new movements, new ways of thinking, new, new, new ideas about life, about people, about gender, about everything. I mean, last week, it was probably the, the summit of, of stupidity when some commentator was saying that he, he's upset that Women, when they give birth to a child, are called mommy. They should be just birthing people. No name, no gender. I mean, this is going on in our world. You don't think it's a little strange? Any of us think it's a little strange, I think. When on a form, and I received this not long ago, from a doctor's office. 
she signed forms, she put all that, and she identified herself, and she said, you know, say her name was Joyce Mary, or whoever it was, I identify as she, her, they. She had to tell her patients to refer to her as a woman because people believe we have the right to call whatever we want to call to whoever we want to call and accept how they identify themselves. Now you say, well, that's a wacko kind of philosophy, but it's current. And, and go on Twitter. There are hundreds of different ways of looking at society today that really destroys the family, for one, destroys the dignity of marriage, for two, and destroys the common good. Because you can do anything you want. Because you have the right to do it. Smack some, someone upside the head, curse someone, misappropriate a word toward that person, you have a right. Well, the Book of Wisdom was dealing with the same kind of chaos philosophically in the 500 years before Christ. And he realized, the author realized, that we've, we've got to go back to our roots. And our roots are Judeo roots. God is the creator. Genesis, in his way, was revealed to us so we could understand man, woman, give birth to a child. And Paul even refers to that famous couple that gave birth to that child, Isaac. Abraham was an old man, yet he had faith. And at the end of his life, he thought he'd never have a child. And he and Sarah, you heard this a few weeks ago in the gospel, he and Sarah gave birth to Isaac. That's Judeo-Christian foundation. You want to get there, heaven? You got to get there from here, from this little book. Not your, my, his interpretation of the book. Not your, my, his interpretation of who that is on the cross. But God's interpretation as revealed to us in the Holy Scriptures and comes down to us in the teachings of the church. Now, there are some teachings in the church that are a little awry, okay? And I would, I would say, let's talk about the things that are really serious, the dogmas of the church. And you want to know what the dogmas of the church is? In a few minutes, we're all going to stand up and say it. We're going to say the creed. That's what we believe. That's who we believe in. That's how we believe the church is running. So, whether it's Luke or whether it's the author from Wisdom saying, hey, wait a minute, you can't get here from there, you can't get there from here if you don't follow the map. The map is our Holy Scripture. The map is our Bible. The map is God's Word. Yes, interpreted and written by people. No angels wrote the words. Ain't people did. Luke was a they say he was probably, besides a historian, he was probably a physician and an artist. Real people wrote the story that you and I use today as one of the four Gospels. Yes, and we also know other Gospels were written, but they didn't get into the, what we call the canon, the acceptable books of the Bible, for various reasons. You could look that up online, but for various reasons. These, these were put into the canon because they had the authority of Jesus, or his apostles, or were used by the whole church in the early days of the church. So therefore, they're very important to us, and we hold on to them. So as we go through our daily Twitters and feeds and all this, and we read and hear, sometimes regrettably, bright government officials, medical officials, come up with terminology that should ring in your ears, realize they're not going there. We are, we hope, if we remain faithful to this. And when those things come up, I'm not a fighter necessarily. I'm not going to scream, I don't protest, I don't carry banners. 
But we've got to put that garbage aside and realize that's not the word of God. That's not what I learned in Holy Scripture or by the teachings of the church. The Book of Wisdom did 500 years before Christ what we are doing now. Get it together, folks. Look at the Bible. Look at where the information comes from. It's not going to come from a philosophy or an artist or a musician. It's going to come from the source. And the Bible, the Holy Word of God, leads us to where we all want to be with Jesus. You want to get there? This is the book to follow. It's a challenge. And you know who it's a challenge for most of you? For whom in, in this community? Your children. The kids. The kids are a little, how can I say, um, indoctrinated in our school systems very often. And sometimes the kids have to fit in, as, as you did and we did when we were children, have to fit in. And the group, the mob mentality, starts accepting things that you and I know at the root of our heart are stupid and unattainable, ridiculous, and unnatural. And there's a major part of our society, I'm even going beyond the borders of the country, major part of our society in our own country that runs face into the scriptures, face into an antagonism against Jesus. And we've got to stand there and hold our own. And what gives us the energy is what Paul referred to tonight is our faith. Faith in why we're here. And faith, Paul has a great, it's a wonderful definition. It's, it's uh, from the book of Hebrews, attributed to Paul, but it's probably not his hand, but we don't have to get into that right now. Faith gave him and Sarah the courage to go when they had no children, no prospect of children, to go where God led them to found a people, a promised land, where people are more numerous than the sands of the seashore. Faith, knowing God is the vision. You're not in charge. We're not in charge. If I think I'm running my life by me, I'm setting myself up for failure. A vision, a road, is what we have offered in the scriptures. And faith needs adjustment. We've got to sit down. We've got to reflect on it. We've got to do what the early church did, reflect and remove the bad from the good, and really tighten ourselves up. Jesus says, gird your loins, get ready. Get ready almost for a fight, or get ready for the master to come back. Just get ready, but live faith while we're getting ready. We as Catholics have the image of faith in Jesus Christ. Just follow him. What did he do? He stayed faithful to the Father. He went to the cross. He stayed faithful to the Father. He was condemned. He stayed faithful to the Father. And what's our gift? Because of his fidelity to the Father, he lives. He's with us. The letter of Hebrews says, they did not receive what they had been promised, but saw things far greater from afar. As they and as we walk with them in faith, you can get there from here if you're focused on Jesus giving us the guidelines and strength to follow our faith into the 21st and if we're here next century 22nd 23rd centuries faith is not easy but it's our roadmap to heaven <laughs>